Did you know that in web design, there is a special type of slider used to display a series of small items at the same time and will automatically continuously move without ever stopping. Its most common use is usually to display logos of brands, business partners, even a photo album. The first special thing about this video is that I only use CSS. Second thing, that's when I move the mouse into the sliders area. Then that slider will stop immediately. This is extremely useful as users can easily pause the slider to take a closer look at the content inside. And finally, I can easily edit the filter on all images to highlight the image being hovered over. And of course I did everything with just CSS. This is a video in a series of programming and web design tutorial videos from basic to advanced. Please subscribe to the channel to be updated with many interesting videos continuously every day. In this video, I will show everyone how to code so that it is the most optimal, cleanest, and easiest to reuse. First, I will create a slider class to store all content related to the slider. Inside this slider, there is a list element. This element will take on the role of containing the entire list of items. For example, here I will create 10 items. For each item, I import a different brand logo image. And this is it. Because as I said from the beginning, we have to create a slider that can be easily reused without having to code from scratch, or even without editing anything. So with parameters that can change for each slider, we need to declare it in a variable instead of using hard code. Then when reusing in other sliders, we just need to change the values of some variables. The slider design will be automatically changed without recoding. First is the width and height of each item. For each slider, the size of the items is different, so I will create a variable to store it instead of hard coding it. Now let's go to CSS. For the slider frame, I set the width to 100%. A temporary red border to make it easier for us to see, because our items run in rows. So the slider's height will be equal to the height value of each item. On the HTML side, I have declared the height variable with a value of 50 pixels. So in CSS, to be able to use that variable, I just need to declare the VAR function. Inside VAR is the variable name. The class list is where all the items are stored. To put the items on the same row, I will use DisplayFlex. As for the child items inside, in HTML, we have created two variables to store the width and height of each item. So now we just need to embed it here. Finally, for each image in each item, it will have width equal to 100% of the width of that item, is 100 pixels. But look here, the size of each item displayed on the website is currently 81 pixels, not the 100 pixels we declared in the width variable. The reason is that the size of the class list is not enough to contain all the items, causes the size of each item to shrink to fit the class list. So what is the size of the class list that will be enough to contain all the items? Many people will think that we can use max content, but here it will not work because I will change some properties of the item so that the max content value does not work. If the width of each item is 100 pixels, we have 10 items. So the minimum width size of the class list must be 100 pixels times 10. So I will create a quantity variable to declare the total number of items existing inside. CSS side, class list will of course have a width of 100% slider. However, the minimum width size must be equal to the width value of each item times the total number of items to ensure the image is not distorted. And it worked. The size of each item is now exactly the same as what we declared before. Now, look at the following simulation image. Here I have created a model. Inside the class list is one item. The slider I want to create will move from right to left. And more specifically, it will have to be outside the frame so that the user cannot see it. That is, it is 100% from the left of the slider element. So first, in the list I declare position relative. The child items inside. Use position absolute. At this point, it will be easy to move based on the class list. And as I said before, by default, it will initially be 100% to the left of the class list. At this point, each item runs an animation called auto run within 10 seconds, and it will continuously repeat. The purpose of this animation is to create a slider effect as follows. The initial position of the item is 100% left, right? 
When the animation runs, the items will move to the left. Note that it will have to go out of the class list frame. So the user can't see it halfway. Its left position is equal to the width value of each item, which is 100 pixels. But since it is less than zero, so it should be minus 100 pixels. So I just need to implement the auto animation as follows. Initially, it will be 100% away from left. It will then move to the left. A distance from the left equal to the width of the item multiplied by minus one. And it's already working. Our next job is to analyze how to make sure the items do not overlap, but move gradually, ensuring accuracy without creating redundant code. First, the running time of an animation is 10 seconds. We have 10 items again. Then take this time and divide it equally among each item. This means that every second there will be an item performing animation. Take a look at the following illustration to make it easier to imagine. As soon as I entered the website, the first item will immediately run the animation. But when it comes to the second item, it starts running after a second. The third item runs again after a second and a half and so on. Thanks to that, the items when running the animation will create an even distance, based on time distance and illustrations. I have a general formula as follows. The item's delay time at a certain position will be equal to the time distance multiplied by the position minus one. Apply the formula to each item. We will have the following, item in position one. There will be a delay of zero seconds. The item in position will be delayed by one second. And so it continues. Now let's use this formula together in the code so that it is optimal. The biggest problem here is how to get the location of each item to execute the formula without making the code long and ugly. For example, like this. In CSS, you can use the nth child selector to mark each item position you want to edit. If you do it this way, you will have to rewrite a piece of code 10 times to calculate the delay time for each item. And even if our slider has up to 20 items, you will have to rewrite it 20 times. So I will skip this method. Besides, another way that many people use is to create a separate class name to distinguish it. For example, item one, item two, item three. This is really not good because you will also have to rewrite a piece of CSS many times for each class to calculate the delay time of each item. Instead, why don't you use variables? For each item, I will create a position variable to mark its current position. At this point, the value of the position variable in each item is completely different. So I already have the location of each specific item. Now at CSS, applying the bounce formula, we have the following. The delay time of each item will be equal to the average time distance multiplied by that item's position minus one. And it worked. So we only need a single line of CSS code for this logic. With this logic, whether your slider has 30 or 50 items, you also won't need to write another line of CSS code. Let's see if it can work well with other numbers of items. For example, here I only create seven items. I will also change the value of the quantity variable to seven so that it calculates more accurately. And it worked well. While working, I made it possible for us to see the moving items even when they leave the slider's range so that we can see and analyze them more easily. And now, in the slider, I will use overflow hidden so that items that go out of range will be hidden. Now I will try to create a background image with a linear gradient that changes color from left to right. Next are transparent, black and transparent colors. At this point, the black part will be in the center if a background image is used to fill the background color. Then mask image will create a layer mask. At this time, the black part when bouncing will be understood as the normal content display part. Transparent colors on both sides will be interpreted as obscuring the content. And if you want more content to be displayed, just increase the size of this black space. And that's how I created the fading items effect. There's a cool feature that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is the slider pause feature. Actually, it's very simple. When the user moves the mouse within the slider's range, then I'll point it to the item, with the animation play state property having the value paused. The animation effect will be paused immediately. However, to ensure that no conflicts occur, please add importance so that the pause value always takes priority. 
Now, every time I move my mouse over a slider, the slider stops immediately. Then it was easy to move again when I left. Now I will go back to HTML to create another slider to see if we can customize it easily and if bad code will be generated. Create a slider class. In the slider, there will be a class list to contain the list of items. Here I will create nine items. Each item will have a different image inserted. And importantly, each item is created with a position variable to mark its position. Additionally, in class slider, this will be where we declare the remaining variables. The variables width and height are used to declare the size for each item. Here I set 200 pixels. The quantity variable is used to determine the number of items inside. So it worked! I created another slider with a completely different size and quantity, but without generating a single line of CSS code. So if now I want when the user hovers on a certain item, I edit it to make it more prominent. So in CSS, when the user hovers over the slider, at this point, all items will be edited to gray color. But for any item being hovered over, that item will retain its original color. And to make this color transition effect smoother, we just need to add a 0.5 second transition filter. And this is our result. So in case you want to reverse the direction of this second slider, what should you do? So in the second slider, I declared reverse equal to true. Back to CSS. We will create an exception handler as follows. Which slider has reverse value equal to true? The system will point to the items, so it runs another animation. And I'll name that animation reverse play. The behavior of this animation is very simple. It will move in reverse compared to the original animation. So that means the ending position of the original animation will be its starting position, and the starting position of the original animation will be the ending position of reverse play. But there is a problem, because in this case we are redeclaring the animation property. This will make the system think that the animation delay of all items is refreshed to zero seconds. To prevent this, in the line of code that calculates the animation delay, add important at the end so it doesn't get deleted. So from now on, when you want to create a slider that runs backwards from left to right, just add reverse equal to true to that slider. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll answer. Or if you have any ideas you want me to do in the next video, please give me your suggestions. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch many interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video.